This video will go over some tips and Blackboard basics for using the materials for our class starting March 16, 2020. First, let's look at where this folder is in your course. It was likely copied into your course in its own menu item in Blackboard called Learning Module Spring 2020 or something similar. Notice the little box with the slash through it? That means that this is hidden from students. So you can work in here and make it available when you're ready. To make this link available, you can click on the gray arrow and select Show Link. I'm going to do that now. You can test that things are available for students by using your Student Preview button. If I click here, this will turn my course into what it looks like for students. Notice all the tools and extra buttons go away. Yes, and I can see this Learning Module Spring 2020. I can exit Student Preview by clicking Exit Preview. All right, now let's go inside the folder. Inside the folder, there's prompts and folders for each of the three weeks that Harper College is going to be doing off-campus flexible learning. In these three folders, split by spring break, is where you can put your materials and assignments for your students during this time. Notice these folders are a bright yellow, and then here's some more for later in the semester, and these are grayed out. This is another way that shows what's available to students and what's not available. At any time with any of these elements, you can click on the down arrow and make things unavailable to students or for something that's unavailable, make available. So feel free to use that um, as appropriate when you want to hide or show things to your students. So let's go inside one of these folders. In the folder are three prompts for things that you might want to consider including during this three weeks of off-campus flexible learning. An assigned reading or viewing, your lecture or type notes or instructor interpretation on the readings and viewings, and then a low stakes assignment, meaning something that's low points but gets the students just engaged a little bit in the learning. These three prompts you can't quite see, but these are also grayed out. These are not available to students. And as you complete these three prompts, you can feel free to delete the prompts by clicking on the down arrow and delete. I'll leave them here for now. So first, to add an assigned reading, the main way you're going to add material in Blackboard is to click on the Build Content Item button. This is going to give you a basic content piece in Blackboard. So you can give it a title such as readings for this week. And then here is where you can type um, instructions to the students. So you might say something like read chapters 12 through 13 and put some more information about your textbook. You can also provide links to articles. So if you have a web link, I'm just going to highlight. I've got a web link, so link to article. So type the name of an article, then go find the link on the web, copy it, and then you can use this insert edit link button to paste the link. I like to have it open new window, insert. So there's a way to, be, to type instructions to provide links to something out on the web using the insert edit link button. Then if you have documents uh, such as an article you downloaded or something you've provided, you can attach documents to items using the browse my computer button. So here I can attach a reading for the students and you can see it down here in attach files. Now I'll click submit. I can see this now on the bottom, see how this is a little more colorful than these three? This shows that this would be available for students once I make this link available. So different ways that I added this reading. I can type an instruction for the students, I can provide a link to something, or I could attach something. Now I'll show you if you want to add a video such as a YouTube video for the students to watch. 
So one good way to do this is to find a video on YouTube that you wish to share. Click on Share, then Embed, then Copy. We're going to copy this code to put this into your link. Once you've clicked Copy, we're going to go back to your course, and we're going to do that same build content item. Now you can give it a name such as Video on Fractions. And then if your toolbar is collapsed, make sure you click the down arrow that says Show More so that you see this whole toolbar. toolbar. I'm going to click on this HTML code button, and this gives you a place to paste that code that you copied from YouTube. Click Update and Submit. This is how you can add videos easily into your course from YouTube, either ones that you've made or ones that you found. So let's move on to the next item, which is instructor interpretation or a lecture on content. So if you add readings and viewings, since you won't be meeting in class, it's a good idea to at least type a paragraph or two or provide your PowerPoint notes or any lecture materials that you would have provided in class. You would add these things the same way we added the readings and viewings, build content item. You would give it a title, such as this week's lecture, and you could type, um, read the chapters, notice. You can type some explanation for the students. You could also type it in, um, in Word and attach it using that Browse Your Computer button. If you have your PowerPoint files with your lecture, consider providing those to the students. And you can use the Notes feature in PowerPoint uh, to type underneath the slides, save those, and give those to the students as well. If you are interested in recording lectures, um, you can use a tool called Blackboard Collaborate Ultra under your course tools. We're not going to go through that today. Um, but you can find instructions for doing that on the Academy's Rapid Online page. Or you can contact the Academy um, for some help with recorded lectures. But simply providing a paragraph or attaching a PowerPoint is a great start. So now I've got the readings for this week, videos, and some lecture or interpretation of the content. The last thing I'm going to show is how to provide a low stakes assignment. And I'm going to show three things. A assignment link for students to submit papers or writings. A discussion board where you can have students respond to a prompt. And then how to add a brief quiz. So first, to add an assignment link to students, I'm going to click on Assessments and Assignment. And then give the assignment a title. such as reflection paper. Give some instructions to the student. The more clear, the better. You could attach additional instructions or a worksheet to fill out using the attachment button. And then give the assignment some points. So I'll make this 10 points. Again. Keep in mind, we're trying to keep the assignments low stakes during these three weeks of off-campus instruction. When you're ready, click Submit. Now the students will have a link point to submit an assignment to you. I'm going to go into Student Preview and show you what this looks like for students. So in that first week, if I'm a student, I can click on Reflection Paper. I can write directly in here, but more likely you will have students attaching files. They can click Browse My Computer and attach papers, uh, worksheets, other things to you. And then the student will click Submit. And then the student can see what they've submitted to you. OK. I'm going to go back into the Instructor View. And as an instructor, in the Grade Center, which is down under your control panel, 
full grade center. This reflection paper, this was added as a column in your grade book. And here's my student preview version, and there's the paper I submitted. So you'll see these little green exclamation points as students submit assignments to links, various links that you add in your course. To grade them, you can click um, next to the student, grade their attempt, and it will pull up for you where you can actually see what they submitted. You can provide a score and you can provide feedback to the students and submit their grade. The students are able to see their grades in their My Grades link. So notice there's a reflection paper and there's your points and feedback. Let's go back into our folder. Another type of assignment you might want to provide is a discussion board prompt. And these discussion boards can be graded. So you might say, um, reply to the prompt and then respond to one or two of your classmates. So to add a discussion board, we're going to go to Tools and Discussion Board. Then we're going to create a new discussion board. Give it a title. such as this week's reading question. Provide a prompt for the students and some instructions. And you may want to copy these instructions and you'll see why in a moment. Then you can leave it ungraded, but if you wish to grade it as a low stakes assignment, you can add points. Then click Submit. Now, You'll see there's our this week's reading question is now in the list. I had other forums in this class. You're going to click next. And now this is going to say, okay, you built your discussion board. Let's place it into the course. I just like to paste. Oops, got to do my control V. I've got to paste those instructions again, or you can retype them and click submit. Now, this provides a link to a discussion board for students, and students can respond by clicking Create Thread. You can reply to students' threads um, as they appear. As students respond, you'll see those little green exclamation points in your gradebook. Let me pop to the gradebook really quickly. You can see there is now that this week's reading that is the, um, the discussion board. So I can grade prompts in here. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to add a short quiz. For that, you're going to click on Assessments, Test, Create a New Test. You'll give the test a name. And then you can provide some instructions for the students. Click Submit. And this is where we're going to add our question. So you'll see a Create Question option appear. And I'm going to show you there's lots of different options to add. Multiple choice is very common, so I'll show you that one. You don't have to give a title but the question text is where you're going to ask your questions. And then if you scroll down below, it defaults to four answer options, but you can change this to more or less if you wish. Add your answer options. And once you've added your answer options, you select which one is correct. So I think I had blue there. These are two. And you can click Submit. You've now added a question. You can continue to add questions. As each are added, Blackboard automatically gives each quiz or each question 10 points. This is a low stakes quiz, so I am going to click on those points and change this to 
two points a question or whatever you see fit. Click Submit. Click OK. So now I'm in my Add Test area and I see the quiz has been added. So before I add the quiz, I will show you. Let's say you started working on the quiz and you needed to, um, like, I have to go. I need to come back and keep working on that later. The quizzes live in this, under your course tools, test surveys and pools. So if I want to go back later and edit a test at any time, I can go to uh, test surveys and pools, click on tests, and I can see my quiz there. I can click here, I can edit it. So whenever you're ready, when you've got your quiz the way you want, let's go back to our week. And I'm going to click on assessments test again. Select my quiz from the list of those that I built. Click submit. And this is where you can provide additional instructions for the student. And you have lots of options for um, setting a timer, making them complete it in one sitting, um, all kinds of different, different things. Um, you can leave everything at the default, especially for low stakes quizzes. The one thing you may want to switch is um, when you make a test, it's automatically unavailable to students. But if you're ready to have it be available, you can click yes and click submit. So now, your quiz is available to students. If you made it unavailable for the time being on any anything, you can always click here and click make available, make unavailable as, as needed. So now we've gone through um, a week of content with readings, videos, lecture, and three different assignment points. Um, you can feel free to go through and delete these prompts, um, but these are unavailable to students. If I click on the student preview, I can see how my week looks. Now for the last tip, if you don't want this folder inside this extra link, if you want to move this somewhere else, or if you want to move or copy any of the items in the folder, um, you can Click on the gray arrow next to any Blackboard items and select Copy or Move. Copy creates a duplicate. Move will simply move it somewhere. And then you can tell it which course you want it copied to. If you just want it somewhere else in the same course, you leave it, um, leave it there. This is the course I'm in right now. Or you can select from any other course in which you are the instructor. Once you selected a course, you can say where in your course. Um, you can, this is kind of your course menu broken out. And you can say, where would I like to place this folder? And then click Submit, and it will copy the folder. And that concludes the tutorial on the uh, these three weeks of off-campus flexible learning. There may be an additional tutorial coming with these later weeks, which are for if we have to move to fully online learning. But at this point, um, You can create your off-campus flexible learning folders and reach out to the Academy for Teaching Excellence if you have any questions. Thank you so much.